One of the biggest advantages of Melder Production plugins is their extremely versatile modulator system. Let's explore some of the possibilities. Our examples use M-Filter, but this system features in all Melder plugins. In this example, we have two bands, a low-pass and a high-pass filter. M-Filter has four modulators. Each can control any number of plugin parameters. Right-click on a modulator and select Click and Learn. Then move a few parameters. Click on it again to disable the learning mode. M-Filter will now assign all parameters you have touched, including intervals of the values. Let's learn a few more parameters. You can select the pencil button instead of a right mouse click. Learning works with anything that can be automated. There are hundreds of such parameters in most plugins. Click on the modulator with your left mouse button to display its settings. There is a list of parameters. Shape of the modulation oscillator and modulation mode with more advanced parameters. Clearing the checkbox next to each parameter disables the modulation and restores the original value. You can add more parameters directly instead of via the learning function. The select parameter list shows all available options and you can also delete them. Let's delete the gain of both bands being modulated as it has little effect with low pass and high pass filters. Select a parameter to see its settings below. This mainly relates to the interval of values. For example, let's make band 4 walk around 100 to 200 Hz or all over the spectrum or only with high frequencies. We can use another range mode instead of interval. For example, up and down lets you specify middle value and range. This is useful when you only want the centre frequency to move while the range is constant. Invert makes the parameter go in the opposite direction, so now the bands go towards instead of away from each other. Shape is a more advanced feature, which lets you transform the values to be set to the parameter. Note the interval is not changed. We can make band 4 stay in the higher frequencies more, for example. Note that invert is enabled. Or in the lower frequencies instead. Or we can make it a little more complicated. The transformation can take lots of CPU, so if you don't need it, you can disable it. Modulator shape controls the LFO oscillator shape. By default, the modulator works as an LFO, but this need not be the case. A step sequencer may be particularly useful, especially with synchronization. Let's show some examples. In normal mode, the modulator works as a traditional LFO, low frequency oscillator. In most cases, you will want to synchronize this to your host. Then you choose the rate. For example, 1 over 4 is 1 quarter and 4 is 4 bars. When you disable the synchronization, the rate of the LFO is defined by the frequency. If high speed is enabled, this is 10 times faster. Phase controls the position of the oscillator at the beginning of each cycle, e.g. a quarter note. This has a kind of time shift effect. MIDI reset lets you restart the LFO from any phase when the plugin receives a MIDI note. To do this, you need to route MIDI from your host to the plugin. In Cubase, you need to create a MIDI track and send it to the plugin like this. Now watch the MIDI meter. It indicates every time a note is received, in this case from an external keyboard, and the LFO gets restarted. 
Here, for example, I press a key repeatedly and don't allow the bands to get close to each other. Let's look at the second modulator mode, the follower, on a drum loop. Follower mode follows the input level instead of using an oscillator. Firstly, we usually need to set up the input level range. By increasing the release time, we force the modulator to stay longer in the higher values. In our case, this keeps the bands further away. Similarly, increasing the attack time makes the modulator stay in the lower values. In this case, it keeps the bands close to each other. By increasing both values, we simply make the modulator slower. Therefore, making the attack and release lower makes the modulator faster. LFO modulation morphs between the LFO and the follower. The higher the value, the more the modulator works as an LFO instead of a follower. At 100%, it becomes a simple LFO, as it is in the normal mode. This is useful, for example, to make the modulator vary the parameters even if the level is quite stable. Advanced parameters allow us to experiment. Maximize, for example, makes the follower much more aggressive. Project onto the LFO shape means that the input level is transformed using the oscillator shape. If we make the oscillator shape more rectangular, for example, it makes the output sharper. Once again, experimentation is the key. Band pass tells the modulator to pre-process the input signal for level measurement. For example, if we only allow low frequencies, this makes the modulator react mostly to the bass drum. We could also tweak it to react on the snare drum, but we may need to change the input level range a little. Envelope mode generates an envelope-like shape and are triggered by either MIDI or the audio itself. Watch the MIDI meter to see the incoming MIDI notes I'm playing on an external keyboard. Let's make the envelope a little longer to give it a more obvious effect. Press a key and release it. Press a key and release it. It's possible to adjust the envelope shape in many ways. You can even define your own envelope shapes. Press a key and release it. Press a key and release it. In audio mode, the envelope doesn't react to MIDI, but analyzes the input signal level instead. When the level exceeds threshold on, the envelope is started. The release stage is executed when it gets below threshold off. LFO modulation has the same meaning as in follower mode. The higher the value is, the more the modulator works as a simple LFO. Project onto the LFO shape again allows us to experiment creatively. Random mode generates a random sequence, however it is still synchronised to the host, so it is the same every time you play it. Speed controls how quickly the values are changed, and is the most important parameter here. Low speeds are particularly useful for creating movement in the sound, which doesn't have any typical LFO rhythmical properties. Now let's create a more complicated example, using multiple bands and multiple modulators. First, reset the plugin by loading the default preset. 
let's simply use four peak filters. Teach modulator 1 to move the lower bands. And modulator 2 to move the higher bands. Enable the modulators so that the bands start moving. Invert some of the parameter ranges so that their movement appears more random. Let's synchronize each modulator differently to the host tempo. At higher tempos, the movements may be too quick to be visible, but you can obviously hear them. Why not make some of the bands follow the input level? Let's add one more band. The view is now quite cluttered, so we'll make it easier to see by temporarily disabling the modulators. This time it will be a MIDI controlled low pass, and we will use modulator 3 in envelope mode for it. Let's press a key a few times. Adjust the envelope shape a little. Now we'll enable all modulators and check the whole systematical chaos. Note that I'm still pressing a key on my external keyboard from time to time to open the low pass.